right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Silver River Museum, Museum Mysteries. I'm Erin Benavides, filling in for Scott Mitchell today, and we have a very special museum mystery for you today because we have a special guest joining us, boys and girls. All right, so let's talk about our mystery for today. I'm going to share my screen with you so that here we go. All right, so here's what your handout looks like for today. And here is a picture of the museum mystery. Some of you may have already started looking at that picture and may have already started thinking about some things. What could this be? All right, so throughout today's lesson, think about what you notice. Think about what you wonder. And by the end of today's museum mystery, we will have solved it and we will know what this is. But like any good story and history tells a story, there are some main characters of our story. So I wanna show you a few of the main characters before we go to our special guest. Here is one of the main characters of our story. Take a look. What do you think? Take a look at what this person is wearing. Take a look at what they're holding in their hand. Are there any guesses about who this might be? Teachers, if you wanna use your chat and go ahead and chat what your students think about this main character of today's mystery. When I see hands raised, so I know you guys are talking about it. Ms. Worms class says a Native American. Some say European, Christopher Columbus, maybe a Native American. Ms. Connor's class said Squanto. Oh, we're talking about Thanksgiving this week, aren't we? <laughs> so this is a Native American, but one that would have lived in Florida. And one of the tribes that lived in Florida and still live in Florida, ah, oh, Ms. Ha's class got it, is a Seminole Indian. Now look at what this Seminole Indian is holding in his hand, because that's an important clue about today's mystery. Do you see he has a gun in his hand? This is Chief Osceola, and he played a very important role in today's mystery. And the gun might give you a clue about that. Here's another main character in today's mystery. Look at this main character. What do you notice about him? What do you notice? Oh, he has a turban. That does look like a turban, doesn't it? So on his head, he has a stick. You know, you can't see the other end of that, but that's actually another gun. So this man is named Abraham. And Abraham was once a slave. So our mystery happens in the time when black people were slaves in the United States, but he escaped and he joined the Seminole tribe. So members of the Seminole tribe could also be black. And Abraham was part of the Black Seminoles. And again, he has a gun, which is a really important part of today's mystery. All right, two more main characters before we introduce our special guest. Oh, 
What about this guy? Have you ever seen him before? Take a look, see what you notice. A president. He does look very presidential, doesn't he? Oh, he has a uniform. Uniforms are important. They give us clues, don't they? He does look like a leader, and he's a leader of somebody, a military officer. Oh, we're getting closer. So this is Andrew Jackson. And Andrew Jackson was both a military leader and later a president of the United States. And Andrew Jackson was actually a president who made a rule. And he was the one who said that Seminoles could not live in Florida anymore. He wanted to kick them all out of Florida and move them to Oklahoma. So think about that. We had a president who was trying to move the Seminoles out of Florida. Imagine if you were a Seminole and what you would think about that. All right, so that might be another clue for our mystery. And then we've got one more main character. Take a look at him. What do you think about this guy? Oh, Miss Gardner's class. It would make me sad if someone tried to kick me out of Florida too. All right, so our last main character. He does have a hat and a bow tie and he looks rather dapper, doesn't he? Does he look like he's getting ready to go to work? You see, Andrew Jackson gave a magician, not a magician. Andrew Jackson, the president we just saw, gave this man a job. His name was Wiley Thompson and his job was to come to Florida and actually remove the Indians. He was supposed to be the one who helped get the Indians to move from Florida to Oklahoma. And he was right here in Florida. Okay, so we've met the main characters. I'm gonna stop screen sharing here. And now I think it's time to meet our special guest who's going to tell us more about our museum mystery. And today we have with us from the city of Ocala, Miss Kathleen Ramirez. And I don't want to give you too much about what she does because that's going to be part of the mystery. All right, Kathleen, I think you can take it away. Good morning, everyone. Hope we're staying warm. All right, we've got a special building today that is super important to not only Florida, but Ocala. You guys see this building? Yeah, I think we already have some people that think they know what it is, huh? All right. Why is this building important? Well, like I said, this is the birthplace of Marion County and the city of Ocala. This building started it all. It's also a symbol of one of the longest and costliest wars that the United States had with Native Americans. Remember what Ms. Aaron was saying about uh, Andrew Jackson trying to make the uh, Native Americans, the Seminoles, move? This had a big part to do with that. But why is this location so special? What natural resources would you need to build that building that we first saw? Any ideas? Yes, wood and trees, very good. 
straw, stone, definitely. Let's look and see what else there was. Wood or lumber from the trees, fresh water. It was located right here in the middle of Florida and it had what we call elevation where it was high up in the ground. These are pine trees that would have been cut down to make the building. This is a, a type of spring. Has anybody been to a spring before? Anybody been to the spring? Yeah, couple of you, awesome. We have a special type of spring here that's not like the others. It's called a seep spring but they would have used it for drinking water for themselves and their horses, and they would have used it for bathing. This is a very old map, and it shows the military roads that the U.S. Army would have used and where they had different locations for their soldiers to stay. And our place is right in the middle. This building was built not once, but twice. The first time it was burned down by Osceola during the Second Seminole War. This is what the first building would have looked like. See all the wood? And here's the second time that they built it. What do you think is included in this picture? What are those small buildings surrounding our big mystery building? Cabins? There are types of cabins. There were settlers that lived around in cabins and tents. Yep. Yep, definitely a gate. There's a big fence in the front. This also would have included places for the horses to stay, the soldiers' homes, most definitely, a hospital, and a blacksmith where they would make weapons. What we have here is a replica of this building. We've rebuilt it so you can come and see it and see what it was like to live during this time. Do you guys see the windows? This big building here is called a blockhouse and they would have used it to hide in, to take shelter from the weather, or to keep lookout. These are the walls. You can see they're just big pieces of trees that they just stuck all together, and they go up super high. This is the inside. What do you think that walkway would have been used for? Holding the walls up, mm, it probably helped. What else do you think it was for? To look over the edge, it's a very, very tall, probably double the size of the soldiers. It To get from one house, yes, it could help them get around. Also, if it flooded, we know it likes terrain in Florida, it could have kept them from getting wet. And it's hard to see in the picture, but there's little holes all along the wall where they were able to shoot out of it if they needed to, but keep themselves safe. Here's the inside of that blockhouse. 
So there were multiple levels so they could look out at different heights. This building housed a lot of soldiers. There were a lot of US Army soldiers that lived there. What would it been like to live in Florida at that time compared to how we live in Florida now? What do you think life was like in Florida in the 1800s? No air conditioning, that's right. It would have been very, very hot. No fans either. Dangerous, yep. There was a lot of own, unknown things going on in Florida. They didn't know the different Native American tribes. They had insects and animals they didn't know about that were new to them that they had to deal with. Lack of medical care, yes, definitely. Also, think about right now, no sanitation, no hand sanitizer, lack of soap and other cleaning supplies. What do you think they ate? What did the soldiers eat at this time? What kind of food would they have eaten? Fish, yeah, or not too far from the ocean. Deer, definitely deer. Corn, berries, yeah, we have lots of berries on our land. Awesome. So, bread pork, salted beef, bacon, peas, beans, all of those would have been in their diet. Here are some items that we have found while we were digging. This is pottery. This is uh, pieces of plates and cups that they would have used. Does that look similar or different from what we use now? Different, very different, awesome. Here's some buttons from the military uniforms we found. And after the Seminole Wars, like I said before, this building became the first courthouse and it became the city of Ocala in Marion County. So do you guys wanna guess what this building is? Do you have any guesses? Ooh. Awesome, the fort, yes it is. It is Fort King, good job. Awesome job guys, Fort King. All right, so we've solved the museum mystery. We know that our mystery object is Fort King, where U.S. soldiers protected themselves during the Seminole Wars. And remember, the Seminole Wars were fought because President Andrew Jackson wanted to kick the Seminoles out of Florida, and they were trying to stay put. And the wars were very costly. Many Seminole and many US soldiers lost their lives. 
And Seminoles eventually, we had about 200 that survived the wars down in the Everglades of Florida. And we still have Seminole in Florida today. So we have a few minutes for some question and answer. My camera's being funny. Teachers, if you wanna take some time and find out what questions your students have and type them in chat, I will read them to Miss Kathleen and she will do her best to answer your students' questions today. All right, so Miss Haas class wants to know, what were the different buildings within the fort? There was a lot of different buildings. The fort itself, the block houses where they would have slept and took in shelter. There was a hospital. There was a blacksmith where they made weapons and ammunition. Uh, they would have had a barn. Uh, different livestock animals like goats and chickens, and they would have had structures for those as well. All right. So Miss Golden's class had lots of questions. The first one was, why was it called Fort King? I've got to grab my book for that one. It was named. I can probably show the picture of him. This is it. No. Oh. can't find it. I know it was called Fort King after um, one of the military commanders that uh, he actually got in trouble and uh, left the military, um, but we named it Fort King after him. Okay, so they also want to know who did the Seminole Indians fight against? So it might be important for us to remind them who was in the fort and who was out of the fort as well. So inside the fort would have been the U.S. Army soldiers. They were the ones that were in the fort. Outside of the fort would have been the Seminole tribe. Okay. Miss Gray's class wants to know a little bit more about um, the fort stairs. How high are they in that block house? They are two stories. They're two stories high. So a normal two-story building, it goes up that high. Okay, um, let's see. We have a question about why there was no electricity. Oh, that's a good one. It wasn't invented yet. We're still gonna have about another 50 years before electricity is invented in the late 1800s. So there's no, but ours does have some electricity, luckily, our replica. Okay. Miss Golden's class wants to know, could the fort have been made of stone instead of wood? Yes, it could have been. If you've um, seen St. Augustine, that fort, that one's made out of stone. It was probably easier because we have lots and lots of trees here in Central Florida. Okay, so Miss Connor's class wants to know, or they commented, I heard the Native Americans lost the war. Um, uh, you, could, you could say that a lot of them were forced to relocate to Oklahoma after the Second and the Third Seminole War. And now they have a lot smaller land that the U.S. gave to them for the reservation. Okay, this is a good question from Ms. Orm's class. Can they visit the fort? Yes, you can. You can visit the fort any day of the week. The park is open from dawn till dusk. Our visitor center is open on Fridays and Saturdays only. And it's free to come, so come check it out. <laughs> yeah. And you have an important weekend coming up soon, right? Yes, the first weekend of December, we're going to have a festival 
where people dress up like the uh, settlers and the soldiers and the Seminole tribe will be here and they are going to put on a reenactment of the battle. Okay. Miss Compton's class wants to know how old is the fort? The original fort was built in the 1830s. This fort is less than 10 years old. Our new one's less than 10 years old. So you rebuilt the fort for a third time, didn't you? <laughs> yes, we did. We just love it that much. So you built it to look like the second one, correct? Yes, I and, believe so. Miss Connor's class wants to know, why did they rebuild it differently the second time? They learned. The first time, if um, you noticed in the first picture, there wasn't a whole lot there. It was just the walls. So after it burned down, when they built it a second time, they built it bigger and better. So it would have more. Their uh, soldiers stayed there a lot longer. Okay, Ms. Haas class asked, why did they have to have those little holes, those places to shoot out of? Well, at this time, the Seminoles did not like them being on their land. Um, they didn't want to move. So they were constantly attacking the U.S. Army and the U.S. civilians. And those little holes allowed the soldiers to shoot out but not get shot back. So they protected them because they could stay behind the walls. Yes, it protected them. All right. Well, my friends, that is all the time we have for today. I really hope you've enjoyed learning about our museum mystery. And a big thank you to Fort King and Kathleen. And I hope you guys get to go visit the fort. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.